Or we had a local local dealership that wants us to write a program. Now we don't sit there and just start hacking some code. What we do, we have to break down the problem into its four different parts. And those parts are going to be what assumptions that we're going to be making. What input do we have to bring in? Once we bring it in, what calculations have to be done? And from those calculations, what output has been uh, provided? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is figure out what our output is, because we always do the bottom-up methodology. Start from the bottom, work away from the top. They say here that dealership needs to know uh, the total number of vehicles sold, and they also need to know what is the average number sold per day. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that they want to know the weekly total, and they want to know the daily average. All right, so now that we have our output, now we just have to figure out how to get that output. And there's only really two places we get the output from. It's either something that is provided to us every time we run the program, which means to be input, or it's something that we have to calculate. Well, the weekly total and the daily average are both something we're going to have to calculate. So we simply copy these two and paste them into the block. Okay. <clears throat> and then we put equal signs next to each one. Now the reason why we copy and paste is that we want our namings to be uh, the same all the way through. Because we don't want to call this weekly total down here and then just call this total up here. Because if we do that, well, then we'll be confused for three steps later because it'll seem like total is different than weekly total. So you want to make sure if you copy and paste, you'll never have that problem of inconsistency as we go through. All right, so the first thing we have to do is figure out, well, what is the uh, daily average? What, what kind of math do we have to do? Okay, so we all know the average is the total amount of something divided by the um, increments that we want to go ahead and measure it. So um, we know that the total number of vehicles each week is going to be the weekly total. And that's going to be divided because they want to know per day by the uh, number of days. All right, so it's pretty easy, right? Weekly total divided by the number of days. And you might be going, wait a second, there are seven days in a week. Why don't we just put the number seven? Well, we could put the number seven there, but what happens if the dealership is only open five days a week, Monday through Friday? So we don't want to put numbers in unless it's something that is never going to change, like 12 inches in a foot. All right, so we know these two. Now we have to figure out where we're going to get weekly total from. And, of course, we're going to get it by doing this math right here. But where are we going to get the number of days from? Now, we're not going to ask the user every week how many days in that week. Although, I guess we could if they said that it changes every time that you run the program. But most likely, they pretty much have their schedule, and that's what they're going to do. So um, <clears throat> on this one, we talk to our user, and he says, oh, well, uh, we always do seven days a week. We, we, we work 365 days a year. We never have a day off. It's always seven. So we're going to say number of days equals seven. Um, and I should have copied and pasted because you see I already made a mistake. And you might be saying, okay, well, there you go. If they said it's always going to be seven, then why didn't we put the seven down here? We didn't do the seven down there is because that's what he thinks now. Six months from now, they could be saying, you know, not enough stuff going on on the weekends. We're going to be closed on Saturday and Sunday. And now we have to go ahead and change our program. It's easier just to change this 7 to a 5 than to go through all your code trying to find out where that reference is. Okay, so we've got this line taken care of. The next thing is, how do we figure out um, what the weekly total is? And we do that by um, adding up each of the days. So we'll have month total. I'm going to call it Muntat because I'm going to run out of the room. Plus 2 tot plus wed tot plus thir tot. I'm going to run out of the room anyway. Um, plus fry tot. 
plus sat tat plus sun tat. Okay, so if we take the total of each of these days and add them together, then we'll end up with the weekly total. So now, next thing we have to do is figure out well, where we're going to get all these values from. Well, these are the weekly values that we're going to be adding up, and they change every week. So which means that since they're going to be provided to us every time we run the program, we're going to put them in as our input. So what I'm going to do is, what I didn't do before, was we're going to do a copy and a paste. Okay, so I'm going to have the Monday total, Tuesday total, whoops, Wednesday total, Thursday total, Friday total, Saturday total, and then Sunday total. Okay, and copying and pasting means that everything here is exactly like every other part uh, that we have. So we've solved the problem. The only other thing we do want to do is add a couple more assumptions because we're assuming certain things. And some of the assumptions that we, oops, 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 oops. Uh, some of the assumptions that we can make is that um, oh, always seven days. You say, well, we have that down here. Well, we're assuming it is, and we'll have to ask our user to verify that. Um, we can say that cars, trucks, uh, and buses all count as vehicles. Okay, so we answer, th uh, we answer, th ask these questions, because I want to sit down with my user and say, hey, is that just cars? Because you're a car dealership, and that's how many goes. Oh no, no, we got trucks, we got buses, we got vans. Oh, oh, okay. So um, that means that they're not going to be a separate number. <clears throat> um, so, and uh, another thing we can say is uh, only one dealership. Okay, we want to ask the user that because we say, okay, we're ready to go ahead and write this program and this is just for this one dealership, right? And he goes, oh, yes it is. Oh, but wait a minute, but I also want to have a combination of all my dealerships. Well, he didn't ask for that. It's not part of the paragraph, but if we as a programmer just get write the program as they've stated in the paragraph without having a list of things that we're assuming from that paragraph, it could go really wrong for us. And if we write the wrong program, it's all our fault because the user doesn't know in what format we need to have the paragraph in. What we do is we provide a problem statement. They take a look at it. If they approve all our assumptions and all our math and everything else looks good, we're ready to go on to the next step. If not, I have to go back and redo my problem statement. But notice this, the bottom-up methodology. When you do that, you'll always come up with the most efficient way to solve the problem. If you copy and paste, as I've done here, when you go from that one step to the next step to the next step, it'll be easy, easy, easy for you. Okay, on to the next.